Hello everybody, Spooky Sane Woman here. Thank you for checking out episode 4 of Seduce Me the Otome. Last episode, Eric whispered in our ear and it was really creepy. We resisted the urge to smack him. That That's it. You sure are quite the charmer. Yes, I am known for that. Mm-hmm. As much as I do appreciate the constant compliments, you don't have to keep talking to me like that. At all. Seriously. Stop. Like what? He batted his eyelids as if he had no idea what I was talking about, and I couldn't help but laugh. Well, like you're trying to get into my pants half the time. I can assure you, I'm just a lover of beautiful women. I wish that wall was closer to me so I could just go, Bah! <sighs> Something tells me there's more to it than that. Oh, no. No! <laughs> Why am I getting so many hearts? For a moment he looked away, losing a bit of his smile. Before I could question it, though, he turned back to me with a new teasing smile. Did you want there to be more? <laughs> no! I didn't want to hit him, but I didn't know how to react, so I couldn't look at him. I merely chuckled. Oh, he merely chuckled again in my ear. No, stop with the whispering! <laughs> Sorry. You just look so cute when you're blushing. Can I punch him now? Can I go back and change my answer? I felt his face heat up simply from his words. I then felt Eric take my hand and kiss it gently. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I hope you'll enjoy dinner, however, my dear. Okay, my dear is okay. I don't mind that. I drew my attention back to the dishes. I was both intrigued and slightly scared at the, by the amount of food they made. Seeing my expression, Eric leaned forward and proudly smiled, gesturing to all the dishes with a dramatic sweep of his arm. I made almost all of the dishes myself. Congratulations! Humorously enough, Matthew looked at him with a shocked expression, as if he was betrayed. His face changed instantly to that of a frown. Aw, Matthew! And I'm the Queen of the Nile! <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I don't know why my throat's all gross today. What's that supposed to mean? Me, you, and James did the work together, dummy. <laughs> you can totally tell Matthew is the baby. It's you, James, and I, Matthew. <laughs> oh, Lord, Lou. <laughs> Little boys will always make mistakes. Don't, don't do that. Matthew looked at James in disbelief, probably for siding with Eric, and he annoyedly swiveled back to Eric to confront him. I'm not a little boy. I'm barely a year younger than you. Wow, really? Dang. Well, you certainly don't act like it. Oh god, please don't start a fight. <laughs> I really can't help but laugh. Oh. That was an actual laugh. Matthew seemed very much like a kid. He was adorable. However, I couldn't help but feel in a way he was much more mature than the others, especially Eric. Huh? Is something funny? <laughs> no, no, not it's nothing at all. Thank you for the meal, all of you. Oh. <laughs> You're welcome, miss. I know they're going to keep calling me miss, but I wish at least they just put spooky there. Oh, excuse me. I burped. Sorry. I have more ginger ale. Such a well-mannered young lady. Beautiful inside and out. Thank you. Eric, knock it off! Oh, great, he's back. In agreement with Matthew, Sam cocked up his head and gl uh, glared at Eric. Seriously, you're getting really annoying with that suck-up act. It was obvious that Sam was the bad boy of the group. He had his big, tough act, and it was obvious he was physically stronger than the rest of the guys. Really? Mm, he kind of looks like a stick. Uh, but there was more to him than that. Or was there more to him than that? I'm just trying to be a gentleman. The young girl has already gone through so much. She deserves a good treatment. There's a difference between being a gentleman and being an obnoxious flirt. <laughs> Schooled even by James. You're going to need some cold water for that burn. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, there he is. Wow, everybody here. By the way, I don't believe we caught your name, even though you know each of us. Yeah. Ah, I'm spooky. 
It's a pleasure to finally know your name. Thank you. Yeah, that's a nice name. Thank you! I picked it out myself! They were all comfortable around me despite the awkward situation we were in. It was as if it were natural for them to be around humans. I, I guess that's just how Incubi worked. But I was still curious about one thing. Excuse me. All at once they looked at me. I didn't know why, but having all of them look at me made me feel kind of important. Like a queen or something. What is it, miss? I wanted to thank you for the food, but I still want to know why you all came here. I feel like I don't quite understand. Understand? Yeah, that's like being told that a bunch of incubi randomly appearing in your house is perfectly understandable. Oh, um, how do we explain? We were attacked. We came here to heal. What's so difficult to understand? You can shut your face. I'm not going to listen to you. Now you're just being rude, Sam. Yeah, serious. I'm just saying, how is that difficult to understand? Spooky, punch him in the face. No, I mean what specifically happened, you dork. Well, you see, we've been traveling around for quite some time now. Just recently we came into town, but we were jumped by this band of misfits. So, in order to escape and heal, we came here for shelter. Again, we apologize for the mess we made. It's fine, I guess. So, you're all better now, right? Yep. All thanks to you. Huh? Me? You see, beautiful. We feed on sexual energy. Oh, don't say it but like that. We don't that. just get it from kissing lovely ladies such as yourself. We can simply touch someone's hand to obtain sexual energy. Everyone carries sexual energy, you know. <laughs> oh, no. I was still in shock about their powers. It wasn't just kisses that gave them power. It was anything physical. No wonder I was out for a while. These incubi in intrigued me, but at the same time, I could almost hear a warning siren go off in my head. Wee woo, don't fuck with these guys. Is there anything else you wish to know? Well... What do you all plan to do now? Yeah, what are we gonna do now, James? That is a very good question. We just got here and surely we'll be hunted again if we leave. I think we all know where this is going. We can take him easily. 1046, okay. I just wanted to be sure. Not without more training, Sam. The result of that was clearly evident in our last encounter with them. At that moment, I didn't know what came over me, but I suddenly felt sorry for them. They couldn't possibly survive out there. If they didn't know it was illegal to break into people's homes, they probably didn't know a bunch of other stuff. They would probably cause chaos all over town. Or, on the flip side, they could be taken in for questioning and be poked and prodded like lab frogs for research. That was even worse. But, they, but most of all, they reminded me of me. Me of back then. Ooh, flashback. I was standing alone. The entire classroom was filled with laughter and chatter, but I stood in the midst of it, quiet and alone. It was strange seeing the whole world pass in front of me with such vibrancy, all while I stood there. On the plus side, I wasn't engaged in any of the drama that might have arisen, like scribbling on someone's paper for revenge or kicking someone too hard. It was kind of nice just standing back and watching these things pass by and life go on. I had long before convinced myself that I preferred being alone. I often said to myself in encouragement, Yeah, I want to be alone. There's no one like... There's no one I like better than me, so I ought to spend more time with myself. But there was a certain bitterness that, coupled with being alone, made me feel so sad. There was a difference between being alone and lonely. I just didn't realize it at that moment. Well, by the looks of it, I was five. Even after that moment, my father, my mother, there was no one to turn to. I was so lonely. That's when I decided on, on it right then. I was going to see my grandfather. I didn't care if my father wouldn't take me. I was going to walk my way over there and I would see what he had to say about it. I had never met... I had never met, seen him before that. What? What? 
What better time to see him then? If no one else was going to help me with what I was feeling, I might as well have turned to him. So after school, I decided to walk there. I had no idea how to get there. I was armed with only a scrap of paper and the address scribbled on it. As a seven-year-old, I obviously had great ideas. I soon became lost, and like I always did when I felt lost, I just stood there on the sidewalk, back pressed against the wall and eyes looking at strangers passing by. And like always, people continued to pass by, and life continued to go on. I was sadder than ever. I had ended up in the situation I was originally in. Nothing had changed. I thought that I was silly for even thinking I could change things with my own hands. That was until a voice brought me back to reality. Hun, is that you? Grandpa! I looked up and saw an unfamiliar face, but it was obvious that whoever was talking to me knew who I was. And from that moment on, things began to change. Life began moving its rusty joints, and I realized that things were moving along. Suddenly, I had become a part of a, the crowd that moved like a blur past me. I was no longer someone who stood still and watched others hurry past me. Life had changed. I had changed. Because the very person who found me that day was my grandfather. I had the opportunity to help them. Though, would I? I... I wanted to, but I wasn't sure if that was the best idea. After all, five demons in my house wasn't exactly the living arrangement that I had imagined when I first moved in. There was the matter of making sure no one found out about their powers. Thinking about them as lab rats made my stomach queasy. Even if they passed for humans, how would I explain having guys living in my house? Imagine if my friends came over. They would practically think I was part of a harem or something. Oh god, imagine if my parents came over. I think my mom would faint. <laughs> Probably. And who knows what my dad would do. I think he would have them arrested on the spot. Ugh, this was hard. Maybe I should have written out pros and cons list before actually having to make the decision. Don't worry too much about it. You have plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy as well. It was strange that I happened to remember what my grandfather said to me when I was little, but it did kind of make sense. They weren't in the same exact situation I was in before, but I did want to help them out. I think it would ease my conscience and also make me a bit happy to give them help. As weird as that sounded. Clenching my fists, or hands into fists, I strengthened my resolve to speak up. Well, um, you could... What was that, lovely lady? That is, uh... Spit it out already. Shut the fuck up. You could stay here with me, if you'd like. As soon as I finished my sentence, the room became still. I'm not sure what went through their heads from my words. Oh, well, Damien was probably reading everything that was going on in my head. The silence in their air cut like a knife until I finally spoke up once more. It seems it seemed like you all needed a place to stay, and, well, I just moved into this giant house, so it seems like it, it makes sense. It was still quiet in the room. I decided to keep talking because that's always a good idea. If you would like to stay here, though, there are two things that I need all of you to follow. Yes? First of all, you can't use your powers or deliberately do something that might harm me or any guest that comes over. Well, save for enemies, but you get the drift. That sounds reasonable. Thank you, Damien. Second, if you have to help me with any errands around the house. This place is kind of big, so... Yeah. That is a generous offer, miss. Are you sure that would be okay? We don't wish to burden you any more than we already have. It's all right, really. I mean... I just started living here by myself, so I would appreciate some help around the house. A wonderful idea. We'll live here oh and my, train see, while Sam doesn't you like that. the house. Servants for the lovely princess. No, don't call me princess. What? Are you serious? Shh, be quiet, Sam. I haven't slept in a bed for days. <laughs> oh, <Aww>, Matthew. <laughs> They all seemed to like the idea, except for Sam, and hey, I didn't really hate the idea either, even if they were incubi. It would be interesting having five guys help me take care of the house, given they would follow the rules that I had just laid down. Grr, fine! But we're not staying here forever! 
Only until we can beat up that group of punks. Okay. That's fine. Whatever. I think that is a reasonable time limit for our stay. Yes! This is awesome! Oh, Matthew's so cute. Also beautiful. If you need a bedfellow. <laughs> no! Um! Eric, knock it off. Thank you. Oh my god. If someone actually said that to me in real life, I would probably kick him in the nads. I was happy that they agreed. Maybe it was because I was going... I wasn't going to be lonely for a while. Maybe it was because they all needed help and my want to help people was fulfilled. I would never be sure. So what are we waiting for? Let's celebrate and dig in! Yeah, seriously, why haven't we been eating the food yet? Finally, I'm starving. Starving. Instantly, Matthew and Sam began to stuff themselves with the food on the table. I noticed James' eye twitching in irritation, so my stifled... So I stifled my incoming laugh. Really, you two? You're both acting like pigs. Oh, let them have a little freedom, James. It's not like we've eaten recently, either. I'm sure they've been starving. Still, that's no excuse for stuffing their faces like backyard swine. I almost couldn't hold it in. Ah. Uh. So then, what the fuck was that symbol? <laughs> I couldn't hold in my laughter anymore. As I laughed, Matthew and Sam looked my way, faces stuffed. There's something funny. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I don't know why, but I love when people talk with their mouths full. Like, not like if they're actually in front of me because I can see their food and blah. But, like, voice acting. I think it's funny. I stopped to catch my breath. I leaned over the table and took a few breaths before replying. <laughs> you both are so funny. Both of their faces turned a slight pink before they looked away from me. And they swallowed the food in their mouths. Oh my god, Matthew! <laughs> Shut up! We're not funny! We're hungry! <laughs> why not both? Well, we're, we're glad that we made you laugh. I like Matthew. He's cute. Shut up, Matthew! What? I'm just saying. <laughs> See, James? It's entertainment for her. <laughs> Sorry, James. They were funny to me. At least they enjoyed the food. As I watched, I took a couple of pieces of food for myself and placed them on my plate before eating as well. Eventually, we all ate dinner together. It was strange, eating with just guys, but they were enjoyable to be around. They made me feel like a part of their family as we ate together. However, our peace was soon disturbed. I'm gonna stop it right here. Cliffhanger! Oh no. <laughs> this is getting actually kind of interesting. At least we know more about the guys, and Sam's still a dick, but so far I think my favorite... I like Matthew and Damien and James. Eric, he he, he weirds me out. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, go ahead and like, comment, or subscribe. Uh, share with your friends, too. This is a free-to-play game on Steam. So if you have Steam and are able to download it, do it. Wouldn't hurt. So thank you guys so much. Bye-bye.